welcome back to the channel and it's Monday so today I'm going to be exploring the science of uh, solar panels, batteries and associated technologies and today I've decided to look at heat pumps. So in the UK there's been a push by the government for people to have heat pumps in their homes. Um, this is to reduce the reliance on gas and also to reduce uh, carbon footprints. So there are problems with heat pumps, mainly the cost of them, and they're not ideally suited to everybody's homes. But this is not what this video is about, so um, this is more about how the science of them actually works. Because there's some, if you're thinking about them, uh, about heat pumps, there are some oddities about them. First of all, you'll see the claims of heat pumps being up to 400% efficient. So how can something be 400% efficient? And also, how do they work? How, if um, the temperature outside is 2 degrees and you want to heat your house to 20 degrees, how do they manage to take energy from outside air and heat the air inside your house up to a higher temperature? So that's what this video is about. So first of all, let's... Um, just go over some basic principles of physics. Everything has energy, and if you put enough energy into one place at one time, things can heat up. That energy can be turned into heat energy and it heats up. Another thing about physics is that if you have a high area of concentration a high area of concentration of energy, what happens is that energy then dissipates to a uh, area with a lower concentration of energy i.e. so if you have something which is 100 degrees and you put it next to something which is 50 degrees the energy will transfer from the 100 degree fin to the 50 degree fin and this is the laws of thermodynamics the motion machine she made today is a joke it just keeps going faster and faster lisa get in here in this house we obey the laws of thermodynamics and as homer simpson has just said we have to obey the laws of thermal dynamics. So how does a heat pump actually work then? Because if it's colder outside than it is inside, then heat is going to uh, try and actually move from the house to outside. And that's where you get thermal losses. Luckily, there are other elements of physics that heat pumps use to be able to basically transfer heat into the home. And this is where the, um, the idea of the efficiency comes from. Because what a heat pump doesn't actually do, it doesn't heat up the air from outside to bring it in. What it does, it transfers energy. And that transfer of energy allows for this um, increased efficiency. So the efficiency thing is um, a bit of a debatable topic about what actually is the efficiency. Um, does it really depends on a number of different variables. But effectively, what you are providing energy to a heat pump to do is move um, energy from one place to the, to the other. So in typically in a heat pump you spend or you put in about one kilowatt um, to move energy but it can move four kilowatts of energy at one time. So that's where that 400% efficiency comes from. So the question is how does the heat pump actually do this? So on the screen now you'll see a very simple diagram of a heat pump. It has uh, five main components. It has two heat exchangers, one outside the building and one inside the building. It has a compressor. It has a thermal expansion valve. And then connecting all these are pipes filled with a refrigerant. And the refrigerant is the starting point. So what a refrigerant does is it's a liquid at low temperature or very low temperatures and it has a very low boiling point so it turns into a gas or a vapor um, at low t at very low temperatures so typically in heat pumps you'll see a refrigerant use uh, has a boiling point of between minus 25 degrees centigrade and minus 50 degrees centigrade which is much colder than the outside temperatures in most places Obviously, there are some places in the world where um, the winters get down to minus 40, minus 50 degrees. So um, just bear that in mind. So what uh, happens is that outside the house, you have your first heat exchange. And if you look at a heat pump unit, and I'll put a brief picture up on screen now, in there is a fan. And what that does, it 
blows air from outside over the heat exchange. And that air, no matter how cold it is, does have energy. And providing that air is warmer or hotter than the boiling point of the refrigerant, the heat exchanger will take the heat from that air and basically use it to transfer it, that heat to the refrigerant, um, which case it turns into a gas. So if it's two degrees outside, your uh, refrigerant is turning into a gas at minus 50, that liquid refrigerant will turn into a gas and that's what that heat exchanger does. What happens then is it gets sucked into a compressor. So a compressor is another fan-based system. Um, it sucks the uh, now um, gas in, which is at um, a fairly low pressure and still a low temperature compared to the temperatures you finally want to heat the house to. So that gas gets sucked in and now we get to a very important part of physics as if you put a gas under pressure what happened is the particles move faster inside they bounce off the walls more often and therefore the if you increase the pressure you increase the temperature because you're effectively doing work against the gas and which means the gas takes that work and then gets more energy and that gets it to a higher temperature so you now end up with a gas which is under high pressure and therefore at high temperature and this is then pushed through um, onto the second heat exchanger, which is inside your house. This heat exchanger goes into something like a water tank or whatever other device you have for actually heating your homes. Um, and that water tank takes the energy of that gas or the high temperature and transfers it into the water. And the water in that tank warms up, which can then go to your radiators or can be, depend on your system, um, There'll be another tank as well, which also holds drinking water or water that's coming into the house, which heats up and you use after you're washing up your showers, for instance. So you've now taken um, a very cold outside temperature. You've used that temperature to effectively boil a liquid. So again, think of this as, a temp uh, as like a kettle. If you boil water, you transfer that energy into the water. It turns into steam and that energy can be tra transported to somewhere else. Um, you've compressed it to increase the temperature further and you've used that, inc that energy in high temperature then to heat up some water which can go into your radiators. So what happens then is that refrigerant has lost some of its energy and is turning back into a liquid. It's still at quite high pressure at this time. So this is when it goes through the uh, thermal expansion valve and what this does it builds up the pressure behind it and then releases a very small amount of those atoms in that refrigerant through at any one time and because you've got a high pressure on one side and a low pressure on the other side as it goes through the pressure is released and it cools down further back down to that minus whatever the uh, temperature of the refrigerant is naturally so if you're using the one that boils at minus 50 it'll lower the temperature back down to below uh, minus 50 so it's back as a liquid and then it can take in heat and the cycle continues. So this is effectively the how the heat pump works. You, what you are actually paying for is for the fan outside to blow the air from outside over the outside heat exchange and you're paying for the compressor to suck that uh, refrigerant which is now a gas in and compress it and then push it around the uh, system and you may be paying a little bit for the um, thermal expansion van, it might be an electronic one, which is basically controlling how much, how it's releasing that, uh, those atoms through at what pressure to turn it back into a liquid. So when it comes to efficiency, um, if it's uh, very warm outside, then it uh, becomes more efficient, providing that the temperature outside is still colder than what you want to warm your house to. Obviously, as soon as the temperature outside goes warmer in the house, then you get basically, you won't need to put your heating on in the first place. The uh, colder the temperature outside is, less efficient it becomes, but providing you um, spec the right refrigerant in there and the right type of compressor, and you have an efficient compressor and an efficient um, thermal expansion valve, then you will still get good efficiency and it should uh, in theory if you have an ideal house for it which doesn't have huge heat losses you have large bore water pipes to the radiators and you have large radiators it might save you money over gas 
Anyway, hopefully you uh, enjoyed that video. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Leave comments. If you have any ideas of any other videos you want me to explain the technology of, please comment them below.